Today I'll be working on a 2013 Mazda 3. The truth. Today we're going to be installing a Magnaflow exhaust and this is the part number that works with the 2.0 Mazda with the Sky Active. First thing you're going to want to do is get your jack and jack stands and raise the rear end of the vehicle up. Once you have the vehicle securely jacked up, go ahead and spray all these little rubber boots and any kind of connectors that may be under here. Uh, you can see the exhaust goes down and then out that way to the catalytic converter. Um, if there's any bolts, go ahead and spray them with any kind of penetrating oil. Uh, just start loosening them up. Now I'm using a 13 16 socket. Go ahead and remove my wheel just for a bit of ease of access getting the exhaust because it runs right behind the wheel here. So this is the full exhaust that came out of the box. You can see it in pieces. Uh, this part meets up with the catalytic converter and it also came with a bag full of clamps and some instructions as well. Alright, next you're going to need a saw to cut part of the exhaust off. Um, you're going to also need metal blades, safety glasses, and where we're going to be cutting is three and a half inches back from the catalytic converter. Um, so go ahead and get you a tape measure and a marker as well. And I'll show you exactly where I mark whenever I get it done myself. Please use all your safety equipment when using any of these hand tools. Also, please ensure your jack stands are good and stable whenever you're working underneath the car. I'll be the first to admit, this would job would be a lot easier if you had a lift. So, as you can see, I had to put some 2x4s, uh, cut up into smaller pieces, cut a piece of plywood uh, underneath my jack to get it up high enough where I could cut the pipes underneath the car. And up under here, there's also a, uh, a frame brace you can want to take off. And each one of these bolts, there's eight of them, they are 12 millimeter. Once you have those bolts out, the frame brace will come out. Then next we'll want to measure three and a half inches back from the catalytic converter. So go and go ahead and get a tape measure and a marker and I'll show you how far back to mark on the cat. Alright, so you got your catalytic converter right here. Went and measured from the back side instead of taking the shield off. And I got this front mark right here where my finger's at. I don't know how well it's going to come across on the camera. But you want to go about three and a half inches back. When I brought the pipe up, I measured it to where they, uh, the existing hanger is. I put the uh, the new hanger right in the same place. And it came to about right there. So I think I'm gonna cut in between the two. Now that that's cut, we're gonna go ahead and take a file. And we're gonna file down the side with the catalytic converter. I'll uh, be sure you're wearing gloves around these cut pipes. There's lots of pieces of little metal that can get stuck in your hand and you don't want that. I'll be making several other cuts to kind of ease my removal process so I'll probably make a cut about here and if I can get these nuts off that'll be great if not I'll just cut around them uh, like on the other side of this axle I'm trying to see it sorry the other side of this axle because the exhaust goes up and over um, and then I'll probably be cutting near the muffler uh, right over here somewhere and then just be able to take it off the hangers on that side focus. There we go. The hanger's right over there. Once you make whatever cuts you feel necessary, go ahead and remove so I can see it. these bolts right here on this part of the exhaust, and then you should be able to start removing pieces of pipe. These exhaust bolts are a 14 millimeter. These have always been a pain for me, but I just keep working it. Maybe can eventually get this thing out of here. What I keep doing is I try and pull on the exhaust this way and pull on the rubber boot the opposite way. And I'm almost there. I can just feel the, the 
tip of this rod right here. But you have to do that for each one. I find out once I get this one off, it's pretty easy to get the, the two off on that side. You just basically pull this way. And they they fight you a bit, but they'll come out. When removing these pieces of pipe, I suggest you use a pair of gloves just to kind of protect your hands against the cut edges that were made. Now you see the aftermarket exhaust compared to the stock one. Uh, we're diluting the resonator, so it's going to add a little bit more sound. Um, but as you go down, uh, the weight of the stock muffler is roughly the same as the weight of the aftermarket one. So it won't be much in the way of weight saving, but it definitely will add some sound. I found if you put a little bit of uh, general purpose grease on these um, shafts, they go onto those rubber boots a whole lot easier. So just lightly put a coat on and do it to each one. Save yourself a lot of headaches. Now we're gonna go ahead and work in reverse order of how we took everything off. So this first pipe, it's gonna go in there and it's gonna mate up to where we cut that uh, pipe of the catalytic converter. Now the bolts on these clamps are 15 millimeters. Don't tighten these all the way yet. We're gonna wait till we get the whole exhaust system together and then we can go back and tighten it whenever we got everything aligned. Now again, I remove this rear tire just for ease of access when putting the pipes back together. Now that all the hangers are hooked up, we're gonna head and go ahead and start tightening these clamps. All these band clamp bolts are 15 millimeter. The only thing I don't like about this exhaust pipe is you can see how far it sticks out from the bumper. I tried adjusting it, but it just doesn't seem to sit flush. Might be an issue I'm gonna have to address on a later date. Next, we're gonna put this brace back on with these eight bolts. Uh, this big hole right here is directly underneath one of those uh, rubber boots that holds the exhaust together. Go ahead and get each one of these started hand tight and then come back in with your 12 millimeter socket and tighten them all up. And go ahead and put your wheel back on, tighten all the lug nuts down. If you have any questions or comments, uh, leave them down in the comment section below and I'll try and answer them as soon as I can. Hope this video helped and I hope you learn from this because I'm, I'm not a fan of it. Maybe you are, but I'm not a fan of how much that sticks out. So.